What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Codebytes channel. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the data analysis operations in Transact SQL. If you are a backend engineer who wants to master Transact SQL topics or a data analyst or a data science specialist, it doesn't matter. This topic is absolutely for you. As a backend engineer, I think every backend engineer, every good backend engineer should at least master one of the SQL dialects. It may be Transact SQL, PostgreSQL, it doesn't matter, but you should at least master one of them. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about essentials of data analysis functions. In this case, we have 5% of theory. I think as a software development teacher, I think it is not possible to master any topic without theory. We have 95% of practice in this case will talk about practical implementation of single grouping set. In this case, we'll learn group by, why, when, how to use group by. And also we have practical implementations of multiple grouping sets. We'll learn grouping sets, cube, roll up, grouping functionalities. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Before diving into practice, let's try to understand what are the data analysis functions. Data analysis functions is a special type of functions that's applicable for set of rows. And at the end, we are getting a single value based on given rows. Okay. So in most cases, we are applying data analysis functions to set of rows. It is possible to apply it to one single row. It doesn't matter. But in most cases, the purpose here is to apply them to set of rows to get a single value based on given rows. We use data analysis functions to calculate summary statistics from groups of rows. This is really important. And we are using data analysis functions to perform calculations on groups of rows. We define a window or subset of rows within a result set for calculation. And we are also able to apply data analysis functions for manipulating and analyzing text, date and time, numerical and conditional data. This is our diagram about data analysis function. Transact SQL, we have two types of data analysis functions. We have group function, window function. In this tutorial, we'll talk about group function. For the next tutorial, I will talk about window functions. But for now, let's focus on group functions. For the group functions, we have single grouping set and multiple grouping sets. For the single grouping set, we have group by functionality. For the multiple grouping sets, we have grouping sets, cube, roll up, grouping, and etc. type of functionalities. Okay, I think that's enough theory. Let's switch to the practice. Let's talk about single grouping set in practice. I have defined some subtopics for us to cover all possible cases related to single grouping set. We'll learn data analysis without group by, data analysis with group by, data analysis with multiple columns defined in group by, select and group by relation, count star and count column differences, having and where differences, working with distinct in your grouping functionality. So we are going to cover almost every aspect of single grouping set in practice in this tutorial. To cover every aspect of single grouping set in practice, we just need a database with a single table. I will use AdventureWorks 2019. It is possible for you to use any database. If you want, you can create your own database with a table to fill it with dummy data. But for now, I will use AdventureWorks 2019 with sales order detail table. Okay, let's go for it. Select from sales dot sales order detail. And let's call sales order details, carrier tracking number and unit price. All the examples related to single grouping set will focus on carrier tracking number and unit price. Let's see what type of values do we have here. This is our carrier tracking number and this is our unit price. They are really simple values here. Okay. I just want to get the total unit price from this table. So I need somehow to logically group all this information to get only one single value. Did you remember the data analysis function? It is applicable for a set of rows. And at the end, we are getting one single result. Let's apply it. Select 
from let's not to type everything from scratch and just use it okay cool and i have some dot unit price in this case i am able to use aggregate functions in transact sql we have aggregate functions like count sum mean max average so let's use our sum to get the total unit price from this table it means i am logically grouping all the rows into one so i have at the end one single unit price this is our unit price so let's add alias here total unit price and let's use mean sad that unit price i want to get the minimum value from here also mean uh, unit price this is total unit price let's just copy paste and this is our max unit price max unit price this is the average of unit price for all the given data okay and let's count it this is the total count of unit price uh, count cool let's just execute it so this is our total mean max average and count information so you see i haven't applied any group by information because if you want to group your data you are able to use group by or just aggregate functions this is really important if i want to use the unit price directly here this query will fail why because i am not using this unit price in my group by when you use your aggregate functions behind the scenes sql will apply some grouping mechanism so there is no need to define group by here if you are using aggregate functions okay the uh, the concept behind the aggregate function is logical uh, group your data and apply mean max type of aggregate functions but if you are using a plain column name here it means you need to group by this data and in this case it will work but the result will be completely different here now we have multiple you see now we have multiple rows instead of one single row we'll talk about it also so the purpose here is to show you that it is possible for you to apply grouping logic to get at the end data analytic result from your query without applying group by if you are actually using only aggregate functions for your queries let's talk about group by functionality itself when you run our first query you will get some response like we have carrier tracking number unit price for the carrier tracking number as you can see we have some duplication this is per row of course but in general we have some duplicate carrier tracking number and for if you want to group data for your carrier tracking number let's say we have some business requirements per carrier tracking number to get the maximum unit price so be careful per carrier tracking number if in your business requirements there is per phrase it means it is going to be grouped okay so per carrier tracking number i want to get the maximum unit price so let's use it group by sad dot carrier tracking number when i run this query it will not work of course because we have a unit price it is not possible for you to define more columns than define it in group by in your select statement it means if you define carrier tracking number you are able to use carrier tracking number in your select 
Uh, if you want to learn more, just check my logical query processing. I'm explaining every detail why this is like this. Okay. <laughs> So for the unit price, I want to get the maximum number of unit price. So it is possible for you to apply unit price in your select only if you are wrapping your unit price with your aggregate functions. Let's run it. And voila, this is per carrier tracking number, I have the maximum values here. Let's just alias it as max unit price. It is also possible to apply more aggregate functions here. Let's use them. For example, not just max, but I want also to see the sum of unit prices per carrier tracking number. Let's run it and voila we have the sum max carrier tracking number again if you want to use unit price without any aggregate function it will not work because you haven't defined it in your aggregate function or in your group by class let's use it in your group by and now everything will work but we will get completely different result because now we are grouping our data per carrier tracking number and unit price not just per carrier tracking number let's talk about the differences between count star and count column um for that reason i'm just going to have a um, the same query here, I will just remove the unit price. If I remove the unit price from my group by clause, it means I need to use some aggregate function here. Without it, it will not work. Count unit price. One note here, it is possible for you to define multiple columns for your group by and you are able to use only these columns in your select. If you want to use more, you need to define some aggregate functions, but it is possible for you to not to use grouped columns here. It means I can easily remove carrier tracking number from here because I am already using it from here. Let's run it and that is working. The problem here is from the understandability perspective, it is really hard to understand what type of value participated in our grouping uh, mechanism. Let's run it and let's just uh, remove our group by clause here to show you the count. This is our total count of unit price. What I am going to show you the count star instead of count unit price. In my case, I will get completely same result for both, but they are not same. Let me show you it from the another perspective. I will use count carrier tracking number, carrier tracking number and star for carrier tracking number okay let's run it you will see we will have some differences here this is our count carrier tracking number okay this is our total count and this is the total count for our store it means this store will include nullable values also okay let's prove it select store from sales dot sales order detail as sod so let's see how many rows do we have count star let's run it cool now i'm just going to add it here one two one three one seven this is our total count i will use sod dot carrier tracking number 
count for it. First, let's not use count, but let's try to filter only carrier tracking numbers that is equal to null. Okay, let's run it. This is our total count for the carrier tracking number. Oops, uh, let's do it in this way. I haven't used any grouping here. I'm not using it. So this is my total rows. Paste it here. Let's open our calculator and let's calculate. 317 minus 60399. And this is our total count. Cool. And let's run this query again. And you see, this is our total count. It means the store will take nullable and not nullable values. But when you specify a concrete column here, the count will take only countable values. It means it will exclude nullable values from here. Let's talk about this thing in our aggregate functions. But before that, let me explain why this query, uh, when you use account, exactly returns zero. This is really important, but I think you already got the idea because we have already explained this. This is always return. Why? Because you are filtering the carrier tracking numbers that are equal to null. It means now we have all nullable carrier tracking numbers and your count checks the nullable carrier tracking numbers that this count should return zero because when you provide exact column name in your count, this count will check not nullable values for the provided column. But we don't have not nullable and it returns zero. But if you want to get the exact value, exact count, you should provide store and voila, this is our count. I think this is really easy. You have already got the idea. Cool. Now let's go to the distinct. It is possible to use distinct in your aggregate functions. This is really easy. Let me explain it. In my case, I have, let's see, in my case, I have the sum unit price that is equal to this amount. Okay. This sum will summarize all the roses unit price, but I want to get only the unique unit prices sum, okay? If you want to filter data distinct, if you want to summarize only unique unit prices, then you should provide distinct here. Let's just run it and now we have completely different value here you are able to use this distinct for all your aggregate functions for example uh, let's use it for the it doesn't matter for the count for the count now we have this item here let's use this thing and let's run it if there is some duplication Yes, there is some duplication, so it removed the duplications and then and applied the count functionality itself. Time to talk about multiple grouping sets. Multiple grouping sets is a little bit complicated rather than single grouping set. For the single grouping set, you have one single group by. This is really important. Let's first identify the differences between multiple grouping sets and single grouping set. For the single grouping set, you have one single group by. It doesn't matter that it can be three, five, eight columns or even one column. It doesn't matter if you are using one group by here. It is going to be a single grouping set. Even you are using um, AVG mean max type of aggregate functions without group by it is also single grouping set functionality because behind the scenes we have logical grouping here. Okay. This is simple understandable now let's try to understand what exactly multiple grouping sets for the multiple grouping sets you need to get requirement from the business to implement two grouping tasks right now i have one single grouping task here 
business requirement is to group data by carrier tracking number and unit price. This is actually one task. That's all. But what if I'll get another requirement to not group just by carrier tracking number and unit price, but also group only for carrier tracking number. It means I'm just going to copy this, paste it here. Let's group by only carrier tracking number. So, cool. This is our second task. Okay, let's execute it. Yes, everything is working. But what if business asks to get this two results as a single result? Then we'll use union all. Yes, we have carrier tracking number, carrier tracking number for the union all. We should have the exactly same amount of columns with the same types. In this case, we have carrier tracking number that matches to this carrier tracking number. Everything is cool, but we have a uni unit price. We don't have any column here. So let's add null. Let's union all this data. Voila, everything is working. Okay, cool. The problem here is when you are going to add another requirements to this query, it is going to be more complex. Let me just add another requirement here. Let's say we have third requirement to group by unit price only, okay? If you want to group by unit price, the columns should match. So I'm using null here. And this is our third task. Let's run it, execute, cool. Now we have different three tasks, but we combined them as a single result. Now we will report them as a single data, as a single virtual table here, okay? So we have this type of information here, cool. Now, where is multiple grouping sets here? This is actually multiple grouping sets. So you have one grouping set here, another grouping set here. So it is multiple grouping sets. The third one here. So we have multiple union alls that help us to get multiple grouping sets. This is the main idea behind the multiple grouping sets. What if I don't want to write my query using union all. Is there any possible ways of implementing it with easy instructions? Of course, we have. So let me just copy this query. And let's paste it here. And after group by, I'm calling grouping sets. And for the grouping sets, I'm going to define different type of grouping set items. This is the first grouping set item. So the first one was carrier tracking number and unit price. Cool. Now let's paste it. What was the second group by? Okay, the second group by was only by carrier tracking number. Let's add it here. Cool. Uh, what was the third one? Third one was only group by unit price. Let's do it and let's run it. And voila, this is our result. Let's run this query again. We have, you see, we have uh, 36,797 elements here. And when you run it, you are getting the same result. It means our grouping sets is abstraction over union all. If you don't want to write this type of union all, you are going to just write grouping sets.
So far, we talked about grouping sets. I want to mention one thing related to grouping sets here is you are able to use exactly different columns here. For example, for the first grouping set, you want to use carrier tracking number, unit price. For the second one, you want to use by modified date. For the third one, I don't know, you may use order QTE. That's completely okay. So you are able to use them. That's actually all. So we have behind the scenes union all type of operations to work with grouping sets. So grouping sets are actually a syntactical sugar. We have more of them. So let's continue. We talked about union all, grouping sets. Now let's talk about cube. For understanding cube, you need to understand grouping sets in more detail for the grouping sets actually for the full syntax we have one more definition here and it is empty brackets okay empty brackets like this it means we are taking null for carrier tracking number and null for unit price let's see uh, we have, you see, we have some data here, null here, some data here, null here. When you reach to null, null, it means this command has already been executed. This will add only one row for your implementation. This is some type of cross operations, okay? So we have carrier tracking number, unit price, then it is possible for us to group by carrier tracking number to, uh, as a separate grouping operation for the unit price. And also we have none, none from these columns. That's actually all. For the grouping sets, for this syntax, we have a better abstraction that is called cube. In this case, let's just um, copy this one. Let's remove the complete ones. So let's use cube and paste it here. At the end, when we execute our grouping sets, we are getting this amount of data. Let's run it. And we are getting the same amount of data. It means the cube is equal to this grouping sets execution result and also if you want to get the same result here you just need to do like this select null null let's run it execute and voila we are getting same amount of data so for the multiple grouping sets, we have different types of syntax to exactly get the same response. Let's talk about um, rollup. This is also really simple combination for the rollup. We have hierarchical uh, grouping mechanism. For the grouping sets, we have all possible combinations for grouping elements. This is applicable for cube also, but for the rollup, we have hierarchical implementation of grouping mechanism. Let me show you. Let's just copy this, paste it here. The first, I have grouped by carrier tracking number and unit price. For the second one, we should exclude the selected columns from uh, right to left. It means for the second one, I will exclude unit price. I will have only carrier tracking number. For the third grouping, I will not have any other columns because when you exclude the carrier tracking number, there is nothing, okay? It is going to be something like this. Let's run this query and let's check the value here. And let's copy our cube to make it roll up. Let's paste it here. Roll up. And let's run it. Execute. And here we are. We are getting the same result. Means this roll up 
is a syntactic sugar over our union all. When you write grouping mechanism based on hierarchical excluding, you are using roll up. But when you use this type of grouping sets, you can use cube or directly union all. I think no one will use this one if we have grouping sets and cube. The last subtopic here is going to be about our grouping functionality. This is really important and before understanding it, you need to understand that it is possible for us to get two types of null information. The first one is actually when you have the real null for your column. For example, we have carrier tracking number and the value of carrier tracking number is null. But the second null is it is possible for union all combination to put null here. So if you want to differentiate these two types of nulls, you are using grouping or grouping ID type of functions. Okay, let me just copy our select statement here and let's paste it here. Let me show you one another thing related to cube and roll up. I'm just going to copy the roll up here. What I'm going to do, I will show you a different syntax of using roll up and cube. When you just simply write group by columns with roll up, it is same as the above query. Okay, let's run it and it is working. The same type of syntax is applicable for cube also. So you are just typing your group by with cube. That's all. It is not possible to apply the same syntax for grouping sets like this. It is not working. Okay. So to make things really simple, just type this type of grouping mechanism rather than roll up. It may sound a little bit complex rather than the above one. Okay, let's explain our um, grouping using uh, roll-up functionality here. After unit price, I'm going to add grouping and let's provide our carrier tracking number. That's all. Let's hit enter. Let's do a little bit format here. I think now it it is readable okay let's run it let's check when you are using grouping it may return zero or one one means it is aggregated by your grouping set if you get zero it means it is the actual uh, the default null that you haven't aggregated that our roll up cube uh, haven't aggregated okay let's run it again so you see below we have null null here one it means this null was aggregated so for the carrier tracking number we have a special case here null null this null was provided by our roll up for that reason, it returns one. But if we have null value inside carrier tracking number, it will not be aggregated and this null will get for this null will get zero here. Let's check some values above. Let's scroll a little bit down. We have null for carrier tracking number and we have zeros here. Let's do a little bit better querying here as grouping okay i'm using grouping here what is not possible here to do is to use where for filtered for grouped data if you group your data you want to filter them you need to apply having rather than where because where comes before group by in our logical query processing just check my tutorial related to logical query processing to understand more about this process for the group data we should use having 
and it is not possible for us to apply this alias it is not working let's check it so you see it is not working why because select comes after having this is also logical query processing let me just do the grouping here you should use the exact functionality to get the aggregated data in this case we have only one aggregated information related to carrier tracking number and let's check not aggregated the default null values for carrier tracking number and uh, let's scroll a little bit up let's add and carrier tracking number is null let's run it and voila we have this type of null values that are not aggregated well that was actually all for the multiple grouping sets just remember that we have special types of obstructions we have union all over union all we have grouping sets over grouping sets we have cube and roll up depending from your grouping sets configuration you can replace it with cube or roll up completely if you want to test your knowledge after watching this video, just go to the Decode Bytes channel and on the community tab, you will find all the relevant questions. If you also want to support me, don't forget to subscribe, hit like button, share the video if possible, and I'll see you in the next tutorials.